Hello guys, uh, tonight I'm going to tie Roman Moser's Balloon Caddis which is beginner fly but it's very effective fly and it deserves a place in your box. Uh, it's a very simple pattern, it consists only of some deer hair, some foam and some dubbing for the abdomen and thorax area. I'm, I'm using the same one, it's my squirrel dubbing mix. So without any further ado, let's get into tying. So let's start with uh, putting the hook into the vise. And the model is 900BL by TMCO, size 12. And the reason why I'm using 12 is purely because it's more visible in the camera. But in reality, I would use 14 or, or smaller, with uh, 16 being the most productive one, maybe. So I'll start my thread just about where I want my thorax and abdomen to meet. Uh, I'm using. Uh, this is UTC thread, 70 denier, I'm using it because it's flat, because if I want to, I can just split it and use dubbing, uh, split dubbing technique. Uh, so I'll just cover the thread of the hook with my, uh, the I'll cover the shank of the hook with my thread, because it's better for dubbing. Uh, and I'll use my scroll dubbing mix to cover the body. So just cover the body in this case not gently but rather uh, just make a thicker dubbing noodle that you can come out later uh, we want to make something that move on the water with the slightest of currents uh, just cover the thread a little bit and I'll show you in a second just how thick the dubbing noodle should be it's more or less like this it's not tight at all it's rather sparse so just cover your hook shank with this noodle but use constant nice thread wraps uh, which will prevent uh, dubbing from falling off I mean too much but dubbing from falling off some of the dubbing can fall off it's it's perfectly fine I mean the fish will do that as well so when you cover everything there is just a little thing you can do uh, it's more or less cosmetic come it out now because it's easier it's more accessible here come it out and come it sideways uh, so the, the the whole profile of the fly is more flat it will more uh, submerge more into the water film into the water surface here so as you can see, this already has a profile of a caddis fly. Now, the next step is using foam. Uh, this foam is some sort of very, well, soft. Uh, I don't know which manufacturer it is, but it's very soft, it's very buoyant, and it's uh, it's it's super good one. Uh, so if anyone knows, please let me down in the comments. Uh, it's more or less... Uh, hook gap width and this helps me to have uh, consistency when tying this piece of the fly. Um, you can just make a taper here and uh, attach it like that but I don't care much for that to be honest so I'll just cover the hook shank because it will prevent this foam from spinning and I'll just catch the foam on the onto the top, top of the hook and I'll cover it with a thread and at this moment don't pay any attention to anything like orange pieces here uh, not being smooth whatever this piece of foam being uh, turned a little bit sideways I mean that's that's everything you can just correct uh, afterwards so I'll cover it with my thread most of the orange parts right now so after I cover most of it by thread, I'll cover the rest of it with dubbing. And this is thorax and leg part. Uh, usually, this is Roman Moser's pattern. Uh, usually, it's just enough to cover it with dubbing later. You can as well, that's why I'm using the dubbing, um, the, the flat thread so I can just split it. Uh, you can use like you can input uh, CDC, some partridge or squirrel or whatever you want to imitate and suggest those legs here. Uh, so it will get a little bit wider profile and it, it will make more buoyant fly. Uh, but because of the lot of 
um, deer hair here it's not necessary so you just cover everything with your thread uh, then after you attach your wings here uh, you can cover it with dubbing more and you will cover all the all the foam all the visible foam actually so after you aligned your deer hair you can just remove those parts that are not properly aligned or parts that you don't want to have here and uh, let's talk about wing length right away usually when you you're making elk hair uh, caddis fly uh, it's a nice thing to to have it aligned with the hook band here uh, what I like to do in this case is I, I like to extend it a little bit more backwards and for that purpose I'll just transfer my hands here and with my thumbnail it's from the opposite side now I'll just use it as a reference point where I want to use my scissors to cut and uh, that's how I have again consistency in tying and it's easier to make every fly same as the previous one so after I cut it with one single flush cut I take one two wraps which are not as you can see uh, there is no any tension here after the second wrap just pull it downwards it will create this nicely oh um, uh, this this part here it will just open more and you can go with your thread through it and it will open even more and you know you're going doing a good job it's more or less like a muddler kind of a head here but you don't want it you want to cover it with your thread now very important part is when you reach almost the end of this part covering it and hiding it uh, you want all of those uh, deer hair wings to be above the hook shank so what you want to do in this uh, in the, this moment is you want to hold all of those um, deer hairs up and then with your right hand thread hand just cover it while pulling everything upwards now if the this butt ends are too long you can choose to cut them with your scissors that's also okay but please be careful don't cut cut your thread now it's high time to cover it with uh, with some dubbing and for dubbing I'm going to use the same dubbing because if you ever took a caddis fly in your hand and you turn it up uh, upside down you'll notice that it has the same color along the whole body along the whole thorax area it's not contrasting at all so just you can allow yourself to be lazy and uh, use uh, the same dubbing again all over again although there is some uh, some points uh, that uh, contrasting body will actually produce you more fish so you can choose whatever you want it's not written in stone so you can just do as you like it now as you can see it's like rough it doesn't look like much but what I want to do now is I want to check if everything is sitting right and right now because I'm near the head and I want to be here I'll just add a little bit more dubbing here and I'll go with just like one or two turns I'll go in my tying, tying point now I'll slightly pull foam and I'll just uh, go back with it and then one wrap and second wrap again no much, there is no much pressure here after the second wrap pull down and then third one to lock it and then while keeping the tension take your web finishing tool and whip finish the fly and it's almost done that's three and then again one two three the same spot I like to hide my knot and just by covering the thread a little bit with a thick noodle this time so not the sorry with a thin noodle this time not the thick one so as you can see I mean barely see I guess because it's out of focus uh, just make a thin noodle and with your whip finishing tool place it below it just whip finish with the dubbing on your thread and tighten the knot it's not going to last forever but it's definitely going to make your flight look prettier at the start 
uh, and prettier fly can actually make you love your fly more at the beginning until you get confidence in your fly which is sometimes very very important now this knot is not completely hidden as you will see when I turn this twice it's there I mean it's almost visible but it's still hidden a little bit um, what I like to it's hidden here it's nice so this bubble bubble caddis is very very versatile fly I like it very much because it produced fish when I didn't expect uh, when I saw some fish uh, rising uh, I thought it was something very small but actually the fish rose for something big like this uh, what I think it is it's that uh, those caddis flies that are laying low like this one is uh, they suggest something that's dead not living or struggling maybe a cripple or something so it's an easy meal and the fish they know that so they will rise with more confidence and they will sip this fly off the surface uh, don't expect usually I mean there is there are no rules of course but don't expect this to to uh, entice the very violent rise usually the fish will just go below the fly open mouth and then just suck it in without almost any disturbance on the surface so guys thank you very much for watching if you like this fly please give it a like thumb uh, subscribe you can share this video whatever and comment down below see you next week